like things. What's going on, y'all? I want to thank you if you're tuning in. If you've been tuning in last hour, I'm your host, Paco. You're listening to Occupy the Media because that's what we do here. That's our biggest problem, so we're going to go at it. The media, the mainstream, lamestream media. Now, don't forget, if you haven't, to donate to RonPaul2012.com. Very important. We're causing a ruckus everywhere, and it's a problem for the establishment, but it's great for us. You know, we could, we could start having being optimistic. If more and more of us continue continue to get out there, network, get on the streets, you know, basically we're raiding the internet right now. That's pretty much ours. So we got an uh, article out, really good. Uh, Christian leader calls Gingrich followers to vote for Ron Paul. So this is some good news. I reported on it earlier if you didn't get a chance to hear it. This is at uh, uh, earnmedia.org, Pastor Stephen Andrew at USA Christian Ministries. San Jose, California. Ron Paul is the only Christian running for president. New Gingrich, Rick Santorum, and Mitt Romney followers should vote for uh, Paul. God wants to bless the USA with the Christian president, says Pastor Stephen Andrew, president of USA Christian Ministries. Ron Paul is the most God-fearing presidential candidate that pastors and the Republican Party should support. Paul is able, honest, and opposes the sins of breaking constitutional laws, removing freedom, abortion, covetousness uh, that Obama has weakened Americans with. He says, if Republicans don't give a Christian candidate, Christians should look elsewhere, even to a third party. Ron Paul can beat Obama. Paul does well with independents and Democrats. Quote, God warns that Obama and Romney serve another Jesus. Romney and Obama aren't Christians, he explains. Don't vote against God or waste your vote with Romney, who shares in many of Obama's sins. <laughs> he hopes people understand the dangers of Romney's cult. Romney thinks Jesus is created being, uh, the spirit brother of Lucifer. Christians believe that Jesus is the second person of the Godhead, God eternal. Mormons also think men become a god. This is considered evil by Christians. Romney bought, brought homosexual sin to schools in Massachusetts. <laughs> okay, Obama covered the name and cross of Jesus at Georgetown. Obama believes in leaving uh, living babies to die who survive botched abortions. Obama opposes God and religious liberty. God says turn away from Obama and Romney. Uh, so apparently God's talking to him. Scripture teaches that voting for non-Christians causes economic decline and removes freedom and uh, blah, blah, blah. So, yeah, Ron Paul is the only person a Christian can vote for. And in my view, the only person anybody can vote for. And amen to that, you know, because I'm not too much with religion. I don't really care too much what a politician's religion is. Uh, I just care about what it is they're doing. You know, besides, you can't believe anybody anyways, man. A lot of these people in these religious institutions live double lives, man. I learned that growing up later, thinking everybody was at church was a wholesome, innocent person. And that is not the case at all whatsoever. You know, not to say that we're any better than them, but no need to be going around acting like you are all innocent and all godly and all. So to me, it don't make a difference. As long as you're speaking for the Constitution, as long as you're allowing people to, you know, worship and praise whoever they want to worship and praise and teach whatever they want to teach. As long as you're not harming anyone, I don't got a problem and I don't think anybody in the Ron Paul movement would either. We're all about freedom of religion, freedom of speech, all of that. Uh, well, what else is going on? You guys check that out. Speaking of freedom of speech earlier, talked about Ron Paul basically swiping down Anthony Weiner back in 2004. We played that clip. Uh, what was it? Yesterday I reported that Firefox is rejects, rejecting uh, CISPA. Yeah, so that's good coming out speaking against them when a lot of other corporations aren't. And, you know, they just want to continue to watch us, listen to us, all in the name of security, terror threat, Al-Qaeda, more and more terrorism, fear, be scared. That's what they want everybody to be. And if you didn't hear, Ron Paul packed 4,000 people at Fullerton. We are doing it up. 
doing it big. We got pictures up. I put a little picture. He went to L.A. Liberty HQ, so that was great, speaking with the grassroots. Uh, what are the headlines that we have that have been going on? Okay, so we I talked about this a couple of times. Uh, someone put out an article. This is at libertarianreview.us. Russian paratroops seize Denver Airport. That might be the headline of breaking news announcement on radio or TV if it weren't joint military exercise. Or is it? Uh, later this month, on May 2012, for the first time in history, Russian troops will be welcomed on American soil to participate in a milestone event in the Fort Collins, Colorado area. From what I read, they'll be provided with American military weapons to gain familiarity with them, capture Denver Airport, and even take it in a little socializing. Attending a Major League Baseball game. This is something that has me scratching my head and racking my brain with the big question of why. No, it's not the baseball game. It's letting them on the inside of our military. Yes, all the problems we supposedly don't like Russia. What's going on? Growing up during the Cold War, the Russians, or as they say, were known for decades, the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics, were considered the United States and the free world's enemy after what they did at the end of World War II. The first presidential inaugural parade, I recall, showed the military might of the United States with curb-to-curb marching troops, military heavy-duty tractor-towed missiles. May Day in Russia's Red Square was an opportunity for a show of military might by the USSR as a comparable parade was hosted with banners of their leaders. And that's people are going to get used to seeing troops on the streets. We got pictures of them in Minnesota. We've seen it happen at uh, uh, Katrina. So let's look, you guys check this out, libertarianreview.us. We reported on this multiple times as well about Russian troops coming here, exercising. They're all getting ready, buying, uh, what is it, Homeland Security, buying all this ammo. What are they getting ready for? What are they preparing for? You know? I mean, it, it's just getting crazy. I, I don't know what, if I saw troops on, right in front of my window, but like, what is going on? Why are you guys here? What's the point? There's... There is no terrorists here, man. And I know the people that's doing it, the troops, they got to be wondering, like, you know, what am I doing? And some of them probably don't. They probably think it's okay. Well, there's terrorists out there. There's terrorism out there. The guns are going to turn off of Iraq and Afghanistan, and they're going to be in turn. They're being turned on us now. That's right. They're being turned on us. So, uh, yeah, I got my guest coming up, Chris Dillard, Christopher Dillard from RonPaulTribune.com. We're going to be talking with him. You guys check me out on Facebook, Paco Elijah, on YouTube, Paco757. Got some more clips up. Going to try to get some more today, tomorrow, this weekend for you. It's just hard for me to go through so many of these uh, these clips and get them all posted and working on the show. Uh, it's tough. Also, we played a clip earlier with Ted Kennedy quoting Ron Paul. Quoting Ron Paul speaking about the Afghanistan war, you know, and also we got this article here that we were talking about earlier. Uh, I haven't, I don't think I jumped into this yet. Ron Paul preparing for presidential race. He's preparing to run for president. They're scared of that too. You know, they're scared of it's going to continue. There's going to be someone else after that. Who knows who it's going to be? But it's going to be Ron Paul candidates all forever now, <laughs> pretty much. What's going on? Uh, Let's see. This is at Business Insider. Just came out today, earlier today. Phase two of the Ron Paul revolution has begun. Ron Paul is already getting ready to run in 2016. Uh, He loves Iowa. Senator Paul's communications director, uh, Maura Bagley, told Business Insider. He's been out there so much with his dad's campaign, so he's really comfortable and really happy with the people out in Iowa, and especially the evangelical groups. In fact, Senator Paul's overture to Iowa social conservatives is evidence of a budding romance between the Kentucky Republican and evangelical leaders, most of whom never been particularly taken with the elder Paul. Business Insider has learned, which is crazy. I mean, that's crazy, man. Why is that? Is that true? I wonder if they're just saying that. Business Insider has learned that Senator Paul has even been approached about a possible trip to Israel with Christian activist David Lane, a conservative kingmaker who's Pastor policy briefings helped launch Mike Huckabee's Political Star in 2008. All right, so we're headed to the break. We'll have my guests on the line next. You guys stay tuned to Ron Paul Radio. I'm Paco. We'll be back. <laughs> 